Hi, an academy. My name is Pumika, and from this lesson onwards, we're going to be studying about some uh, really um, unimportant, as you may say, but very, very important from the examination point of view topics. So, uh, in this lesson, we are going to do uh, chromosomes. Now, this topic in NCRT is like, um, I guess, a paragraph or so, but this is very, very important from the examination point of view, as it is also considered under genetics. And because we're doing cell biology, we've got to do a major part of chromosomes as well so I had started this uh, in nucleus and I have just explained the general just if you follow the chapter but uh, here we're going to do it uh, in a bit of it more detail so let's get started what are chromosomes? Chromosomes are organized structures of DNA and proteins which are found in cell and they are thread-like structures uh, located inside the nucleus of the animal and the plant cell. Chromosomes are made up of proteins and a molecule of DNA. Okay, so now you know what they are. They are thread-like uh, structures and they are composed of uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, the DNA. Chromosomes are passed on from parents to offsprings. Uh, the term chromosome is derived from a Greek word chroma which means color and so Soma, which means body. So the chromosomes are named so because their cellular structures are cellular bodies and they're strongly stained by some dyes which are used in research. So uh, this, this kind of uh, tells you what the word chromosome means. And um, moving on, chromosomes, they play an important role and ensures that the DNA is copied and distributed accurately in the process of cell division. And in most of the organisms, chromosomes are arranged in pairs uh, in, in the nucleus of the cell and we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and uh, because there are 23 pairs so in total there are 46 okay so uh, this is the diagram this is the structure that i want you guys to remember so that we can uh, consider each and every part in detail so we have the chromonimata right here in the center as you can see we have the centromere that connects the two arms from both the sides we have the matrix around the chromonimata and uh, yes that's it Okay, so the structure in eukaryotic cells, chromosomes are composed of single molecule of DNA with many copies of five types of histones. Histones are proteins uh, molecules and are rich in lysine and arginine. Okay, that is the reason why they have positive charge, the, uh, the histone proteins, because lysine and arginine, they are kind of um, positively charged because they are present uh, in huge quantities inside the core of the histone. That is why they get an overall positive charge. They are positively charged hence they are bind tightly to the ne negatively charged phosphates in the DNA sequence and after binding together they kind of give an appearance of not an appearance exactly they kind of make the whole thing electrically neutral okay so small number of uh, non histone proteins are also present they are mostly transcription factors transcription factors regulate which parts of DNA to be transcribed into the RNA now, during most of the cells of the life cycle, chromosomes are elongated and it cannot be observed under the microscope. Of course, because they're elongated, they're long, like structures, they are, uh, you know, a person is unable to look at them under the microscope. But uh, during the S phase of the mitotic cell cycle, the chromosomes are duplicated. Okay, so you, you, you need to know this phase, the S phase of the mitotic cycle. So here is where the chromosome, they get duplicated. At the beginning of mitosis, the chromosomes are duplicated and they begin to condense into short structures that can be stained and observed easily. So, only when the condensation starts, they can be observed. Now, these duplicated condensed chromosomes are known as dyads. Okay, and the duplicated chromosomes they are held together in the region of the centromere. The centromere in humans is made up of one to ten million base pairs of DNA. Okay, so we studied that small little circle which holds the two arms. That's the centromere. The DNA of the centromere are mostly repetitive, short sequences of DNA, and the sequences are repeated over and over in tandem arrays. Okay, tandem means many numbers. Okay, over and over again. Then the attached duplicated chromosomes are commonly known as sister chromatids. Okay, so if I say this is the centromere and we have the two ones, so these two are the sister chromatids right there. Then we have the kinetochores, they are the attachment point of spindle fibers which help to pull apart the sister chromatids as the uh, mitosis process proceeds to the anaphase stage. The kinetochores are a complex about 80 different proteins. Okay, so those are the ki uh, kinetochores, they help in division of the 
whole thing. And the shorter arm of the two arms of the chromosome extending from the centromere is termed as the P arm and the longer arm is the Q arm. So let's observe this diagrammatically. We have the pellicle right here which is the outer covering. Then you have the matrix inside. Now here we have the secondary constriction. And uh, near the satellite portion, we have another sec secondary constriction. And uh, here you can see the spindle fiber right here. And here we have the centrosome or the kinetochore. So uh, the spindle fibers, they kind of begin from here. And the kinetochore, it kind of helps in separation. Okay. So uh, that's the position of the primary constriction as well so this is the anaphase structure of the chromosome at the anaphase stage now uh, basis of uh, you know on the basis of chromosomes on the basis of the position of the centromere the chromosomes can be uh, divided into four uh, categories the first one is the metacentric in which the centromere is present right in the center and the two arms they are kind of uh, more or less equal in um, in length probably and then we have the sub metacentric in which the the centro where it kind of moves towards one of the sides so there's one long and one short then we have acrocentric in which the uh, the centro mat kind of moves towards the end of one side so you have one very short and one very long and then finally we have telocentric in which the centro mat is present right there on to the top Okay, now let's talk about the chromosomes in the three different cell types. First, we have the bacterial chromosome. The bacterial chromosome contains circular DNA. We have already done this importantly. And uh, unlike the linear DNA of the vertebrates, most of the chromosomes are circular DNA molecules and there are no free ends. Of course, because they're circular, there will be no free ends. The bacterial DNA is packaged into a single chromosome and a continuous loop and the DNA is folded or coiled to fit into the cell. The compaction of the DNA DNA involves the binding of proteins to the DNA that help form initial loops which is then coiled. Now we have prokaryotic chromosomes. Uh, the prokaryotics like uh, bacteria and the archaea typically have a single circular chromosome just, just the way we did the bacterial one because the bacterial one is obviously considered as a prokaryotic type, right? Now let's talk about the eukaryotic chromosomes. In eukaryotes, the chromosomes are multiple, large, linear and are present in the nucleus of the cell. How multiple? You know how many pairs are present in the human uh, cells, right? So they are multiple, they're linear, they're large and they're present inside the nucleus. Now let's talk about uh, the human chromosomes. The human chromosomes are the two types of autosomes and uh, sex chromosomes which are also termed as allosomes. So um, these are the two types of uh, the chromosomes which are found in humans. Genetic traits that are linked to the sex of the person are passed on through the sex chromosome. The rest of the genetic information is present in the autosomes. Okay, so uh, the genetic traits, the hereditary material, it's in the sex chromosomes, of course, the allosomes and the rest of the genetic information, the somatic structures of the body, they are decided by the um, the the autosomes, all right. So uh, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes in their cells, of which 22 are autosomes and one pair are sex chromosomes, making a total of 46 chromosomes in each cell. Many copies of mitochondrial genome are present in human cell. Let's talk about the sex chromosomes now. The sex chromosomes differ in form of size, behavior from the ordinary chromosomes. The sex chromosomes determine the sex of an individual during reproduction. Of course, uh, these sex chromosomes differ between the male and the female females of course have two copies of the x chromosome and males have one x chromosome and one y chromosome okay so uh, in the process of uh, sexual reproduction in humans two different gametes fuse to form a zygote and if if an x form x fuses with an x then it's obviously going to be a baby girl and if a y fuses with an x of the ovum then it's going to be a baby boy all right so here we have the autosomes this is all humans the 23rd pair they all look like this the biggest one is uh, uh, this one right here okay uh, moving on we have the x and the y chromosome which are the allosomes right here so you can see the y chromosome is the smallest one uh, right moving on we have homologous chromosomes okay homologous chromosomes are also known as homologues or homologues 
the homologous chromosomes are pairs of chromosomes that are approximately of the same length okay approximately are the same length position of the centromere and pattern of the staining genes for the same characteristics are at a com corresponding loci in an organism one of the homologous chromosomes is inherited from the mother and the other from the father these chromosomes are usually not identical but they carry the same type of gene okay so you need to know they are similar in length and they carry the same type of gene during the process of mitosis the daughter chromosomes carry some sequences in the nucleotide assuming that there is no error during the replication process the genome in diploid organism is composed of homologous chromosomes one of the homologous pair is the maternal chromosome and the other is the paternal chromosome okay so because the genome is supposed to be diploid one set is supposed to come from the father one set is supposed to come from the mother so that uh, each haploid part makes the the zygote it come uh, to be diploid okay during the process of meiosis the homologous chromosomes they cross over okay homologous chromosomes are not identical they are not same of course they are just similar the uh, genes are uh, carried in the same order but the alleles for the trait may not be similar uh okay moving on we have the functions of the chromosomes okay firstly we have the genetic code storage which is the basic and the most important function of the chromosome the chromosome contains the genetic material that is required by the organism to develop and grow the dna molecules are made of chain of units called genes genes are those sections of dna which code for specific proteins required by a cell for its proper functioning so all these genetic codes they are stored in the dna and because dna is present in the chromosome uh that is the reason why it's important this is the most the uh, basic function of it then we have sex determination now i have already told you this in the previous slides but we're going to do this again humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes out of uh, which one pair is the sex chromosome females have 2x and males have only 1x and 1y the sex of the child is determined by the chromosomes which is passed down to the male if x uh is passed out of xy chromosome the child will be a female and if y is passed out then a the child will be a male so obviously it depends on the father on the male partner what kind of baby are they going to give birth to control of cell division is another function the chromosomes they check successful uh, division of cells during the process of mitosis the chromosomes of parent cell ensures that the correct information is passed on to a daughter cell required by the cell to grow and develop correctly fourth uh, we have formation of proteins and storage proteins are essential activity of a cell of course the chromosomes direct the sequences of proteins formed in our body and also maintain the order of the dna the proteins are also stored in the coil structure of the uh chromosomes so that's all about chromosomes i hope i made myself clear i hope this topic is as clear to you as in the book or probably a coaching center and if you still have any queries you can write me down in the queue and a section or the comment section please follow me please recommend this lesson on to your page so that more and more of your friends and people that you follow come to know about it and they may gain from it and uh, do rate and review my course thank you for watching